We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Head peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Hey, hey folks, here we are, we might be drunk We're here, we're queer, and Sam's making some cheer We got Sam Morrill on the blower, and our pal you know him, you love him. Chrissy D. Chris DeStefano, Chrissy Bitchips. Call him what you will. How are you, Chris? What's up, everybody? How you doing? You look sharp. You look sexy. You look, you look I like shiny. Jacket, yeah, you but look- you know it is? Here's the slime I am. It's like you think that it's like this nice, you know, you know, expensive outfit. The jacket's from H&M. The jeans are all navy, and I'm wearing a Budweiser shirt. So <laughs> I just, good, dude. I'm all about like, hiding it. You look like yes. Tom Hardy or some shit. Really? Like, yeah, you look good as shit. So I think Tom Hardy's the... I think here's what I'll say about Tom Hardy. He's the actor because, you know, everyone says like, oh, if I was drunk, like I'd hook up with this guy, even though I'm not gay. Like Tom Hardy's the closest to guy I hook up with where I'm not drunk. I wouldn't need right. to. I'd so I do it sober in front of my family. I'd kiss <laughs> him on the lips, morning. you know? Yeah. Well, look at this. So what's Sam a making a martini? Yeah, we're doing a cloudy martini. I got this is Amazon. These were nice. free, and I stole this from Uniqlo. So I'm with you. <laughs> Did you this steal is, it? Yeah. I don't know what this, but what, what I'm wearing. That's actually. nice too. I look alright. It fits like a goddamn glove That's on that tight bonds. Yeah. Lanky scarecrow body you got there. It there it is. Look at the studio. Yeah, not too shabby, huh? I like it. I like that. I came in, uh, and the the front the doorman guy told me I didn't have to wear a mask. I was like, I'm sorry, I have a mask. He's like, It's okay, man. That's how we do it here. Yeah. There oh, there it go. is. Nice, dude. This looks like my dad's urine. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That? That's a Dangerfield joke. I was drinking so much, I pissed an olive. Yeah, I no. fucked it up. Uh, you my, could my just wife. tell. No disrespect at all. I could just tell this is going to suck. <laughs> Take a step before you judge me. You'll okay. feel better than it tastes. There we go. Sam, I stand corrected. Yeah, Dead motherfucker. Ser- what? Sam, what? I literally stand. Fu- wow. I thought this, this, because this looks like sewage. Because it's, you know why? Because it's actual good ass brine. Wow. Dude, this is amazing. This looks like what happened to the the Mississippi River in Louisiana. This is <laughs> no. I know this looks oily. like hur- this is Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Woo. But mm. it's good, like a right? meal, dude. There's so Whoa. much olive juice in here. It's like it's like a meal. I'm getting calories in here. It looks like a like a L.A. hot chick drink. But yeah, it tastes like my dad. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, well, it's your dad uh, tastes delicious. Mm. I, yeah, Norman's got a hot dad. You sound like my stepmom. <laughs> oh, are your parents divorced, Mark? No, no, I wish they're still together and they go at it. My parents are divorced, and I was speaking to my dad. My dad's uh, visiting uh, me from Florida. He's been staying with us for two weeks, and he said, "You know, the best thing I ever did in my life was divorce your mother." He's mm. like, "I'm sorry, like that. If that hurts you, he's like, but." Really, like you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be proud of you if I was still married to your mom. He's what? like, I, yeah, he Why? was like, he, he just think, cause he was just like, my life was going nowhere with your mom. He's like, and your mom's a good person and I'm a good person, but we just weren't good together. And I think that the best thing I ever did was divorce her. That's he goes, fair. And, he goes, and it, you know, 37 years later, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I, he said, I would never be as happy as I am as a human being if I was still married to your mom. I'm with the De- Louis C.K. has that great joke. Every, when he got divorced, I was like, I'm sorry. He's like, no, divorce is great. It's he, the best yeah. thing you can do. Because I bet you somebody like Louis or anybody, like, you know, when you, it's not like the divorce came out of nowhere. He was probably waiting to do that. Or guys, yes. you're waiting to do that good. for years. Good. And then when it finally happens, you're like, yeah. I'm out of jail kind of thing, you know? It's a right. weird thing. It is weird to tell you, like, I'm I'm a better, I wouldn't be proud. I get, I'm happy, I get Right, but I wouldn't be proud as a little. That's well, happy. Well, what he was saying was, proud. what he was saying was, he was <laughs> like, I meant like be he said mother. because because he said I think that I was able to be like a, a good dad to you because I was not in a negative headspace with because ah, I was not with your mom. That makes if sense. I was with your mom, he said I would have just been a miserable curmudgeon of a guy, and then you probably would have turned out like a big piece of shit. Right. And so he was like, you know, you you, I, I think you're a happy guy, right? Because my dad was like, I'm happy. But I, I could only get happy when I left your mom. Yeah, because she sucks. It's a, it's a. <laughs> I've, I've met both your parents. They're the nicest. Great. My that mom and great. dad. How about this? My yeah. mom and dad, they now are like actual like friends again. But that's the, it's only because I started to have kids. Like what, before I had kids, they would fight at anything. They got into a fight in the crowd at my. David Letterman set where I saw if you watch my David Letterman set about whatever it is three and a half minutes in I like look up 
a little bit because there was a, some commotion. Yeah. And then Mad Dog Matter and James Matter was sitting. He was one uh. of my guests to come. And he was sitting up there. He goes, yeah. He goes, that commotion, the ushers ran down the aisle and almost threw your mom and dad up because your mom was sitting in like the center seat. And my dad, your dad leaned over and was like, hey, you were never at any of his shows. I should be in the center oh. seat. Not you. And then she was like, I was the one that was at all the open mics. He goes, he, he goes, I was the one who was at the Maui Taco. I was the one who did all that. <laughs> he goes, I went to the creek in the cave. He was uh, like, you didn't do any of that. And she was like, shut up, Tony. He's on stage. Who gives it? And then because James. Get to your closer. For fuck's I know. Sake, I know. Right? Mad, Do Mad Dog Manor was sitting in between the both of them. So my, my James was the buffer yeah, between my dad and my James. mom. James. I know. Well, I would say this. If I'm your therapist, they're making your Letterman spot about them. They got to be there uh, for you right there. I know. I know. I, and then my mom ran down the stairs and pretty practically pushed me out of the way so she could get a picture with John Travolta. <laughs> he was the other guest. <laughs> you talked to Travolta, right? I, yo, no, listen. The thing is with a guy. The, with a guy like a John Travolta, somebody I know just met Tom Cruise mm. and said that the, like there's an aura uh, to them, like yeah. like you understand why they're famous, like there's something magical yes. about. And Tim Dillon said the same about Alec Baldwin. Tim right. Dillon just did uh, just worked did something with Alec Baldwin. The he podcast. said you get he did his podcast. He said you get why he's so famous. Travolta has that thing where it's like it's a presence that I I don't have. We don't have you that know. So comics. it's like so he, they have it where you're like oh I get why Hollywood was attracted to this person and why they're like this this is something otherworldly yes. because he had me in one of his trances. That's what they do. He had me in a fucking trance. I saw him. I was. Going up next, you know, he had just finished his segment. Then there's like that commercial break and I'm standing there by that curtain, you know, waiting to go out. I could see the set. I'm like sh shitting myself. And he walks past me and then he comes back. He goes, whoa, you have on a beautiful suit. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I, I go, it's from Joseph A. Bank. And he was like, oof. And then <laughs> he kind of, he was like, oh, you know, and I was like, I had bought it off the rack in Suffolk County, Long Island a day before, because I don't know if you remember, remember you like, get remember like out of our group, like of guys who like started like Che was the first one yeah. to get like Letterman and everyone was like, he wore jeans. Right. And then I was like, oh shit, I was going up two weeks later. I was like, I got to get a suit. Yeah. But I don't right. own a suit. Right. So, so I, I so I just bought this. Bullshit suit that was too big, and he goes, um, he goes, this is you have such a beautiful suit, and I was like, wow, I was like, thanks, and then he goes, um, he goes, uh, he goes, so, so are you nervous? And I was like, a little bit, and then he put his hand on my chest, like without, like just put his hand like right in the middle of my chest. He goes, why is your heart beating so fast? I was like, because you have your hand on my nipple. That's his pickup line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, yeah. and then he goes, and then he goes, um, he goes, just calm down, breathe with me. And I was like, what? I wow. swear to God, dude, this my mother's witnessing this, this is whole a thing me too. He goes, I know, oh, 100 percent. He goes, he goes, wit, you know, he goes, um, he goes, just breathe with me. And I was like, okay. And he goes, you've done this already. And I said, no, I haven't. I'm going up next. He goes, you've done this already. And I go, no, I'm going up. I almost like, I almost like got angry because yeah. I you know when you're anxious. I almost was like, no, fucking stupid. I'm next. Like, yes. I'm, I'm paralyzed with fear right now. Yes. So I put my, and he goes, no, you've done this already. And I said, wow. I haven't. And he goes, no, 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 you have because you're set. Had to be vetted, I'm sure, by David Letterman and all his bookers and yeah. producers. I'm sure they don't just let you on. So you've done this set. You've practiced. That's, famous people think that Letterman is watching our set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right. David Letterman was like, thanks, Frank. Like, he didn't give a shit. <laughs> Conan O'Brien's in the room like, that guy yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, no, right. that's sure. not how it happened. <laughs> so There's he, a booker. But he says to me, he goes, um, he goes uh, you've done it already. You've been vetted. Producers, they don't just let anyone on the show. He was like, so... It, the hard part Our is over. Our next guest, Paul Mercurio. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. He goes, you know what's so crazy, dude? Dude, well, the guy who's the guy Eddie Brill, who yeah, was the warm-up yeah. comic, did one of my bits that I was later gonna do in the warm -up? on the Letterman show in the warm-up. Uh. James, I had all these texts from James Madden. You know, I, I don't dare look at my phone. Sure, I had all these texts from James Madden. Hey, man, don't do the R word bit. Don't do the R word bit. That I, 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 I I'm not R word bit. A bit where I add R's into words that don't need R's. Uh, okay. He was doing it. Based off like a Boston accent. You used to call it the N word bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting a podcast with Neil Young. It's called We Both Never Did Rogan. <laughs> I'll be a guest. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so, so. Get Joni Mitchell. There it is. So, so, um, 
you know, uh, he's like, you've done this already. And I said, no, I have it, whatever. And he goes, no, no, you, all the hours, all the times you practice in front of the mirror, the hard part is done. You've been selected. Now you just have to go live the moment. Yeah. So it's over already. The work is done. It's over. Just go live the five he's minutes. Not wrong. And he goes, be present for those five minutes. That's my only advice to you. He goes, and you know what? He goes, I'm supposed to catch a flight. I want to stay here what? and watch you live this moment. He said, it's so cool for me to see someone experience this for the first time. He goes, I'm going to be here cheering what? you on. You're going to crush. Great job. And I'm like, holy smokes. And then with that, like almost like while he's talking, you know, I don't realize that about 90 seconds I've went by, you get that little tap yes. on your shoulder because you can't hear. And they tap me out and I hear David Letterman saying, please welcome Chris Stefano. Oh my God. And I went out there and I had – you know, like a really good present you in killed. the moment set. And I felt like, oh, my God. And I, in my head this whole time, I'm thinking, like, I'm, like, doing these jokes in front of John Travolta. Like, who knows what could happen? Maybe I'll be in yeah. Look Who's Talking 3. I, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. And then I come out, and I see my mom there. And she's like, oh, my God. Like, you know, like, great. Whatever. How's it feel? Wow. I, was like, I was, like, amazing. And I was like, where's where's John? You know? <laughs> and she goes, oh, honey, he left immediately. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, <laughs> but he did what he had to do. He got you truthfully, up. Yeah. and I he almost wasn't mad. I said, I said, Mom, how quick did he like? You mean after the first joke? She goes, No. As soon as you t went oh. onto stage and said and put your hand up to wave hello, he walked out. Wow. Go, yeah. So, so it. W but I'm not mad at him at all. It no. worked about that at all. Nothing. You and had now, a moment with him, and yeah. now you're a Scientologist. And then I swear <laughs> to God. And then you ready for this? And this is a thousand percent true. The vet. We, we know this as comics, but the audience may not know this. Like, we want to hurt ourselves a lot. So I had a set at the uh, David Letterman. I felt fantastic. I then immediately took the bus, took yeah. the bus with James Mattern and my ex-girlfriend at the time and my friend from home, took the bus to the Village Lantern. Yes. Okay, the old Village Lantern comedy club. And I bombed with that same set in front of six or seven Swedish people in my Letterman suit. I just was like, I have to do it. I did it. I drank a 40 on the bus in a brown yeah. paper bag. It was like, because you want to feel that pain. I come off the bus, okay? I I'm sorry. I come out of the uh, the, the village um, lantern, walking down the street. This was June. Walking down the street is Tracy Morgan with no shirt on and a $15,000 <laughs> chain. So I, so I see him. and After I, the I Walmart crash, you got a $45,000. I know. He upgraded. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So he goes, so so I didn't, you know, I, I don't know Tracy Morgan. Of course, I know who he is, but I, I never met him or anything. My ex-girlfriend at the time was like, Tracy, more like, hey, like, you know, because everyone was kind of drunk and buzzed. It was like, my boyfriend just did Letterman. He goes, who? And he goes, my boyfriend right here. And he goes, oh, shit. And then he goes, he goes, yo, come over here, player. So I go, uh, he grabs me by, uh, like, puts me like in a headlock with almost like a sweaty armpit. And he goes, um. He goes, yo, your girl's beautiful. I was like, thanks. Uh -oh. He goes, I like her toes. They painted like Skittles. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, man, it's great. He goes, so you just did David Letterman? And I said, yeah. He goes, how'd it go? And I was like, it was good, man. I had this, you know, I really felt like I had a good set. He goes, I'm proud of you, man. I always know from day one you was a real motherfucker. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go, I've never met you. <laughs> like, I've never met you at all. I swear, it's 100% true. I go, I, I go, Tracy, I've never met you. He goes, nah, nah, nah. I know you from day one. <laughs> and I go, this is day one. And I go, I go, yeah, dude, this is day one. And then he goes, who's the other people on the show? He goes, who's the music guest? I was like, I really don't remember. He goes, was there anybody else on the show? I said, John Travolta. And then I swear to God, he goes, he put his hand on your chest <laughs> i swear to christ and i was like he did he was like yeah that boy cold oh, wow. I, I swear to god dude and then, oh, wow. he, then he goes yo congratulations he goes i'm gonna be seeing you so, hand to god six weeks later maybe less i did that south beach comedy festival yes. comedy central south beach comedy festival in miami in miami i you know last minute edition so i might have been a month later last minute edition to the show uh uh to uh i'm in the festival Tracy Morgan's headlining the Jackie Gleason Theater down there. He needs an opener. Comedy Central chooses me. I open. I see him in the green room. I go, Tracy, what's up, man? He goes, who are you? <laughs> I was like, I met you a month ago outside the Village Lantern, whatever. You know, I, I'm the guy who did Letterman, whatever. He yeah, goes, day one. He goes, I don't know who you are. You want a water? I was like, uh, yeah, sure, I'll take a water. Then he proceeds to give me, he goes, his age, Matt Frost. Matt Frost is his agent. He goes, Matt, what? give this man some waters. And then I was like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I get a, I take a couple of bottles of water. Uh, uh, Matt comes over and gives me a couple bottles of water. He goes, no, 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 give him a case. I want him to have a case of waters. <laughs> so he gives me a fucking Poland Spring bo uh, case of water off a pallet. I was what? like, what is this? And I said to Matt, I was like, what is this? He goes, Tracy Morgan always needs a pallet of water at every show he does. I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah. What a story. Legendary. It was great, man. Amazing. But it, honestly, dude, it's shit like that that's like, I'm so happy that it worked out that way. Yeah, you know? right? Yeah. It'd be weird if it was just 
you started opening for Tracy Morgan, and that's better. He didn't no, know who you were. This, he doesn't know. He doesn't give a fuck who I am. Oh, shit. He this shit keeps you funny. The, yeah. Being the butt of the joke keeps you funny at the end of the day. Yeah. Yes. The bus ride, the 40. I love the idea that your parents are fighting at Letterman. You're in Letterman's like, why'd you get into comedy? You're like, right there. Right there. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> too. Yeah. Fucking mooks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I, you know, just, just this past weekend, I did the Beacon Theater, and it was like a beautiful moment for me, sold out, whatever. N not even close. I, the... By far, the biggest ovation was when I brought T.T. Jerry and Homeless Pimp <laughs> off the stage. I mean, they were like, I was just like a fucking carcass just on the fucking stage. Well, wait, we got to talk fun. about the. So Sam's doing the beacon coming up. It's about to sell out. You're both New York guys, New York yeah. City. What was it like? I mean, that's a beautiful theater. It's a special place. It's iconic. Were you nervous about selling tickets? Did you know you had it? So, Tell us everything. So, so that's awesome. Uh, congrats to you, Sam. Congrats to you, my friend. I, when it is, I, I think, yes. hey, hey, these are better than they look, too. Dude, dude honestly, man, I need a second one. I'm, yeah. I got, we might need more ice, Matt, if that's I possible. Spilled, I spilled some of it on my jeans. Thank God they were $8. Um, <laughs> well, these maybe. are fucking good if I don't mind. I mean... Whatever company sent us this shit, uh, yeah. 1888. Hey, man, this is good, good year. olive shit. I'm watching that show, 1883, by the way. Great show. Uh, it's on Apple TV. Phenomenal show. Is that the year Biden was born? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there it is. That was all right. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, what, what, trying to keep him joking here. What, uh, what is it? So 1883 is a show about oh, yeah, look at Sam this. Elliott's in it, um, Tim oh, McGraw. Yeah. Um, it's a really fucking fantastic show. Westerns are back. And there's I'm like a you. scene, like a random scene in the show, like so random where they do a flashback to when the main character, Tim McGraw, is fighting in the Civil War for the Confederacy. And some he's like on the battlefield at Antietam, which is like a very bloody Civil War battle. And he's on the battlefield. It says flashback to Antietam, whatever. And he's like and a union union soldier captain or lieutenant comes over. And it's like talking to him and he's like, it's going to be OK. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to hurt you. And you're like, oh, whatever. And then the camera pans up. It's fucking Tom Hanks. Whoa. Tom Hanks, just, in, just a random bit part. And then the same. Then the very next episode, they have a sheriff that like comes in and kills everybody. And the sheriff is Billy Bob Thornton. And then hey. they never come, they, neither one of them ever come back in the show again. It's like it's like just keep showing your toes. Then the next like scene, uh, uh, John Travolta touches his chest. He's like, why is your heart beating so fast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I know. It, Soldier. It's a fucking great show, man. 1883. It's 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 connected to that show Yellowstone. Uh, yes. I like Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Another so, Western. So I, I got Mark on Yellowstone. So Yellowstone. Like so are, how far deep into Yellowstone are you? I just started the fourth season. Okay, so the fourth season. So I think. So do you know like when you know Wait, when they flash don't say back? Too much. No, no, I'm not. I'm not going right, to give right. anything away. But you know when they flash back to you know Kevin Costner's sure. John Dutton when they flash sure. back to the 1800s? Sure. That's this show. Oh, That's an that is this exact so this show. Every show's got an uh, a, a alternate universe or not alternate uh, extended universe. Right, yeah, you have to. Right, right. That's right. the only way to make money. You know, I mean, yeah, they got to be familiar. Everything's got to be familiar now, or nobody watches it. Wait, so let me tell you about the Beacon. First of all, the one thing about us being New Yorkers, Sam, is what, and I don't know, but what, what. Not that I I I don't want to I don't want to say regret this I don't but what I wish I would have done a little different but I guess I can't okay. is, is the guest list that I I, I had because it's from New York so many people came there and wanted to come to the green room and, they, and this and that yeah. it, uh, it gave me so much it, it added an, a level of pressure that I didn't need so if I ever God willing get another chance to do the beacon or something like that I won't. I won't invite all. I'll just say I can give you guys free tickets. Absolutely. No problem. No green room access. No, no after party. Access. They don't get that it's a show. You man. know, like I was that whole day. I mean, this the, is the only job, by the way. They're not you're not going to see like Les Mis and they're like, yeah, come in the green room. No. Yes. Right. No. So well, true. Well, Tim Dillon did the beacon and Tim's a New York guy, too. And Tim was like, you know, when he came to the show and he said, man, you got so many people here. I said, I know, you know, it's a beacon. Whenever he goes, dude, I'm from New York, too. I, I told nobody to come. Yeah. He's like, you got to like. I'm gonna do a special and put it out on YouTube. Uh, and I, the old me would have invited everyone. I want nobody's coming. No, you don't. I don't want, want, them want there. anybody. I don't want my family there. I don't want anybody. Zero people. I don't want my agent there. It's a work no. night. I want to do the show for my fans, and then you can watch the product. Exactly. You the know? show is number one. I can't yeah. be giving you energy and you time. No. How was your day? Get out. Oh, you couldn't find parking. Get out yeah, of here. Yeah. Then I, I got I got people texting me. At, you know, I go on stage. You know, whatever. The show starts at eight o'clock. I have people texting me seven yeah, fifty. Exactly. Where, where are my tickets? Where exactly. is this? What do I do? Are you gonna do the same set? Like. I'm like, what the? So was that's my a good question at uh, 7:59. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's be my only advice for you. That's but good honestly, advice. man, I gotta be honest. The Beacon Theater. It was one of those experiences where, when I was about to be brought on, James Mattern, uh, Sergio Chacon featured he crushed, and then James Mattern hosted, and he he's just like such a great host. The Amazing. Best. When, Amazing. when he was about to bring me up, 
it was like one of those things where like I just forgot all my material. Like it happened. Like you know, I'm sure we've all been in that situation where like I just was like, oh shit, I don't even know how I'm gonna I've open. That. I forgot, but it was like it's almost like a good thing because like my brain almost like zapped out and like started with a blank slate, and mm. I just came out and was like so in the moment. Yeah. That it, be, by the time I got the light at 50 minutes. I thought, like, I remember in my head thinking, I'm probably at about 20 now. And then James was on the side with the light for 50. I was like, that Whoa, can't be right. Oh, that's a and good then I was sign. At 50. And then I did like it, you know, normally when I do a set, you know, I'll get up to, you know, 55 minutes, whatever. I'm like, all right, let me start winding down. I must have did 80 minutes on that stage just because it would just kept... They're so loving, you know. Yes. Like they're and your it, people, and they know it's yeah, a it's a big. Uh, they big had night fun, for you. man. They yeah. had fun, and then they and then I was like, after I was done, I was like, man, that should have been my special. But instead, <laughs> I'm going to do it at New York Comedy Club. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Well, you you'll, want you'll, the club do, atmosphere too. Yeah, but also I think to shoot in a, a room that big is going to do right. Got to cost well, like 150 grand. Well, right? that's what they said. Well, I was going to do my special in Puerto well, Rico. Were you the same agent? And I'm sure he gave you the same rundown that he same gave you. Well, well, I was going to do my special in Puerto Rico. Now that would really stand out because I was going to say oh you know i'm doing on youtube in puerto rico i was going to say to my i was going to say listen you know these people you know like um uh uh you know netflix doesn't want me amazon doesn't want me showtime doesn't want me i want to go back to where i'm loved where the people love me puerto rico the puerto rican government wants a hundred grand for any they don't love you either i was like i guess y'all don't love me <laughs> yeah right y'all forgot what Chris, Chris was going to open with I feel pretty. Yeah, and then, no, uh, I was going to come out fucking just throwing paper towels into the crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? You know what I you mean, got to say? Hey, look, we'll have a cock fight first and yeah. then it'll be free. But yeah. I do, you do a thing that I do, too. And I, like we got to cut it out. We act as like underdogs and stuff. But it's like yeah. you're doing so well, dude. You're yeah. crushing it. Like it's cool. To, it's, he it, earned it, though. It's not well, like no hey, he got he tapped on the it. shoulder no by uh, saying, some fat guy with a cigar. Like you're well, in, well, kid. No one's, Joe no one, Hollywood here. Well, no one. Look, Joe Hollywood, you got to you got to get in. With that guy, but let me tell you, you did it the right way. You did it through your own base. Oh, we're doing the mics together. Look yeah. at us now. Yeah, yeah. Look at us now, drunk on uh, weird looking martinis. Look, yeah. I made. Drunk in a fucking weird studio. I know we're drinking Flint water. People's... I knew you'd like the Patrick Ewing thing Dude, there. So Patrick, let me tell you my Patrick Ewing story. Ooh. So I got two of them. <laughs> He's got any. You could feed Chris anything, <laughs> and he'll have something. I'm dying That's to hear me. your Harvey Weinstein story. <laughs> <laughs> he touched He's your innocent. chest, and he said your heart's beating so quickly. <laughs> so. Patrick Ewing, my very first Knicks game. How old were you? Nine, ten. Okay. The thing, sports for me, why why sports is so special for me is because it was an incentive when I was a child to do good in school. My father would say, Mm. if you do good in school, if you listen to your mother, if you do this, whatever it is, you will get tickets to a Knicks game. You will get tickets to a Yankee game. So sports was incentivized for me. So that's why I fell in love with it. It was because that's how my father you know, got me to do what he needed me to do. So, you know, they were like, it, it, you know, if you pass these, get these good grades and we're going to take you to the Knicks Magic. That was the first game I went to. Shaquille O'Neal's Magic wow, versus whoa. Patrick Penny Haynes. Hardaway too or no? Yes. Yeah. yeah 1992 yeah. Orlando Magic. So Penny, uh, that, that, that finals team, right, was uh, – were they they the were fi- the finals in like 94, 95, I think. So, yeah, but – That's but, you, they beat Jordan. Definitely Penny, definitely Penny and, and, uh, and Shaq. So – and Scott Skiles, for sure. So, he so was, he was a killer. So I was a little kid, you yeah. know, early '90s. You know, we're sitting, you know, whatever, upper deck seats, whatever. Patrick Ewing goes baseline and like tomahawk dunks on Shaquille O'Neal, Ooh-wee. and I was like, oh my god! And then he like, you know, Shaquille had like fallen under him, so like Patrick had to like hang on the rim a little bit. So I go, Dad! I like stand up. I was like, I was like Patrick Ewing. I was like, Dad, look at him. He's swinging on the rim like a big monkey, and I'm like, oh, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> like that, because to me it looked like a monkey. And my dad was just like pulling me down, pushing me down, yeah. and everyone was like looking over oh, at me fuck. like whatever. And what? then my dad, I, I, there's oh, a thing where I don't know if I tried to do like misremember this because I thought it was like a, 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 a funny or I thought it was like some type of defense mechanism, yeah. but I'm almost positive. Like I would be willing to say I'm 95% sure this, he really said this is he looked around cause he got tense. Like, Oh really? He, he got, yeah. Cause I just yelled up and said, he's like a monkey and went, Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. Well, the ooh. blackface didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, then, know, you know, it's bad when you offend yeah. early nineties, New York. <laughs> yeah. And then my dad, right. I was going to say it was 92, 93. My dad like said to like the general group around me goes, my son's retarded. Oh. 
Good save. Good Not save. Not special needs. Nothing because my son's retarded. So he made it 10 like times it. worse. By the, way, by the way, his save is now would make it 10 times worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. genius. That's yeah. the time. That's a great move. It's like what Kevin Spacey did. He's, he fucked that kid and he was like, well, I'm autistic. Yeah. Or no, he said, I'm gay. Or I'm gay. Which is did not help. No, that didn't help. <laughs> you can't say it. You can't be accused of fucking someone underage and be like, I'm gay. That's not a sexual orientation thing. Right, so right. Kevin Spacey, <laughs> well, let me tell you my Kevin Spacey story. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, swear, I swear to God. So, so I went up to Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> so so this, this, this was, you know, five, six years ago. I had did, I somehow got involved. I forgot how I initially got involved, but Kevin Spacey and Cal Ripken Jr., the, the Baltimore Orioles, you know, sure. Iron Man Hall of Famer. Oh my God. They had some legend. type of foundation down in Washington, D.C., and they, I got hired to do, uh, to open the show that they were doing like this rally or, or this fundraiser or whatever. I got hired to open the show. Wow. And Cal Ripken. And How many Ke years ago is this? This is maybe six, so seven. Pre-cancel. No, 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 yeah. No, there was no, nothing about Kevin Spacey. It might've been months away, but Kevin Spacey was, I mean, he was being, he was a Kevin Spacey. He like, was a God. God. A legend. So. One of the best actors. Great ever. actor. Oh, yeah. And funny guy. So, so. And great guy. Cal Ripken, which by the way, Cal Ripken Jr., if you're not a baseball fan, Google him. His blue eyes are like, it's a little like, pull it's it a little that. traumatizing. Like to look. piercing. It's insane. Pull Cal it up. Ripken. Cal pull, Ripken. pull up Cal Ripken Jr.'s eyes. Man, and, he must have really gotten laid, huh? Get wet. Didn't his mom get kidnapped? Yeah, like, what? In, yeah, it was something weird. They got her back, I think. Yeah, they got her back. But Cal Ripken. Whoa. Look at that. That's real. That's not Photoshop. It's like That's a, a warlock or something. And he's phenomenal. Great baseball. player, too. Oh, Cla yeah. Class act. Broke Lou Gehrig's record like the really? you know, first ballot Hall of Fame. He yeah. got the disease? <laughs> <laughs> I knew a guy when I started out. He passed away. Really funny guy, Glenn Coyle, had a joke where he goes, My girlfriend got Lou Gehrig's disease, so I traded her. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great joke. That's great, a great joke. joke. <laughs> so he's so, kind of got uh, a Michael Keaton in him. Yeah, he's yeah. he's great. Very handsome. So I I I'm there. And first of all, Cal Ripken, I do my five minutes, which is like, you know, bullshit, five minutes opening up this thing. Cal, Cal Ripken goes, he goes, man, I don't know how you do what you do. That I don't have the balls to do that. I was like, you literally are one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Like, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah. nah, stand-up's harder. I it's was a like, different thing. He goes, stand-up's harder. I go, Cal. It's not. <laughs> okay. I was like, dude, you're, you're a, like, but to us, it looks, I mean, obviously yeah. baseball is harder, but to us, to them, that must be like, yeah, that's not what they do. Think about the repetition of just swinging. Right. It's like, it's antisocial. Yeah. Right. right? So it, it was mm -hmm. Cal Ripken, Phil Necro. I don't know if you sure. know Phil Necro. He's yeah, like yeah. a Hall of Fame knuckleball pitcher. I think he just passed away. Sure. And Kevin Spacey in the green room. Wow. The big yeah. three, of course. The big three. Yeah. And Jasmine, my child, my kid's mom, my girlfriend, my kid's mom, she's in there with me. And it was like, you know, we're there. So she sees all this. So Kevin, so Phil Necro and Kevin Spacey are doing like, like horrifying, not horrifying <laughs> to a comic, but like if it ever got out, like audio leak, like wild jokes, like yeah. racist, sexist, like crazy <laughs> shit. But you're like, whatever, who gives a fuck? It's green room. Yeah. yeah. But then Phil, uh, uh, Kevin, Spa this is pre- Spacey anything. turns to a camera. If this ever gets out, I'll be finished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But House then, but then Kevin, Kevin um, says something to Phil Necro like, "You ever just kiss a boy on the lips?" No <laughs> like, way. Like something crazy, and we were like, "Like it Come was like on. it was a little bit like." Rrr. And then we were like, "Okay." And then Jazz was like, "Jasmine said to Kevin Spacey, he goes, what do you mean a boy?'" He goes, "No, no, no like an 18, 19 year old boy. You ever just kiss a boy on the lips? Nothing's better." And then Whoa. it was so weird. And we were like, okay, like whatever. That's like, his testing ground though. 18, 19. That was his save. Yeah. And right. we were like, yeah, that's fine. Like whatever it is, it is, you know, mm. cool, whatever. And to be honest with you, to be fair, to, again, I don't know him past this. He was mad cool that night. Yeah. He was fucking awesome. After I'm I, sure he's the most charming guy on the planet. Yeah. After, after I did my set, he was right there. He was like phenomenal. He was like, let's hang out. Let's do this. Let's do that. He was like, we, we got to do all these. He was like, we, we got to be, I got to put you in movies and this and that. And then he was like, come find me in the after party. And then I, I swear to God, I, lo I saw him at the after party and I walked up to him. I was like, hey, Kev. I, I was like, hey, Kevin, like, I'm just about to go. You had just told me to come find you. And he was like, I'm a little busy right now. And he was talking to like some 21 year old, like, Jacked, gorgeous male waiter. Oh, that was, that was like, and you ever heard him saying, "I gotta get you in movies." Yeah, 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 yeah same, exactly. same spiel. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard stories about the you know, touchy, touchy, touchy with stuff on set, and then if you were like, you got to cut it out, he would cut it out. But if you didn't say something, he would he would keep that going. Well, well, sure. the, the, mm. the, the the reason why I bring it up is because again, no judge. I I don't know him. I sure. other than that, but but 
we I remember I remember in the car going back to our hotel that night Jasmine said to me she goes Kevin Spacey's like a little we like it's a little much with him right mm -hmm. and I said yeah I said to be honest I said but I think that's all how Hollywood actors are this is pre me too stuff so whatever sure. and then when all the shit came out about him Jasmine right away she was like I told you Whoa. that that there was something off about that guy I so. was on uh, Jim and Sam right when that I think it was the week it came out yeah with John Bernthal who was in Baby Driver with him and John Bernthal was just openly like. That guy's a piece of shit. What? He, Before it came out? Oh, no, it came, it came out. out. <laughs> and, and John was like, I've never talked shit about an actor. He's a bad human being. Really? And he was like, not nice to the- He like, talked publicly. It was on air. I'm sure there's record of it on air somewhere. I mean, he would just say, he was just saying like, yeah, that's not a good guy. And it, it, it was like a news story from that episode that- Yeah. Because it was like, John Bernthal's a big actor. Dude, that's like- I Very was on, nice guy I was too. on Sway in the Morning, which is like an all you know black show sure. for a black audience. I was like the guest host for Sway in the Morning. And the 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 at while the Jussie Smollett news was breaking <laughs> before anyone thought he was lying, like just a man who was beaten and and it was like that. And I was on with some guy, like white Jewish guy who like owns a bunch of gyms. And he goes, um, Sway was like, you know, everyone went in the room. How do you feel? I was like, oh, it's horrible. It's you know this and that, but whatever. And then because you know the story did sound horrible. And then they got to me, and I was like, I don't know if I believe it. Yeah. And they were like, and they uh, and they were like, what the fuck? Uh, they were like, and nobody like scolded me, but like, but you see, they're like, that's that white shit with white people. Like they don't believe everything, and right. blah 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 blah. And then it came out like two months later that it probably was made up because I was like, it doesn't seem real. Because my I I said I, there's proof of this. I said it on air. I said because at that time they were saying two. White, uh, they were saying the news white was saying supremacists. two white supremacists had said you're, the, you're that you're that Bleach. you're that f word f from Empire, Empire. and Who I said there's that? no way white people are watching Empire. No, that's what I said right on air. You're, you're yeah. not you're not a, you're not a MAGA white supremacist guy, and watching fucking no, Empire. No, there's no yeah. way that's happening. But that's bald, bald, ballsy of you to do that in that black room. Right, yeah, but I was trying to do, I was, that was my bit. I was like, there's right. no way they're doing that on Empire. Like, that's a funny bit. Yeah, I'm, I was just doing it and they were like, no, nah, like, no, nobody, it wasn't like bad. It's a but, tough angle to take when it's, when it's, the jury's still in, or the jury's still yeah, out. Right. I texted Sway two months later. I was like, apology, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He left it on red. Ah. Whoa. No, no, Sway's my boy. I love Sway. All right. Sway's one of those guys who I started, he taught me, like, when I was hosting, like, shows in 2014, 2015, he just gave me, like, the best advice, the best tips. Really? Like, yeah, Sway, if you ever get a chance to, like, work with Sway from Sway in the Morning, Sway Calloway, he's, like, the, truly, like, one of the best I've guys. I've seen some of his interviews. He's great. Great interviews. And, you know, interviewed yeah. Obama four times. Whoa. You know, like, he's, like, a personal friend. Like, hey, Tarantino. Obama, if you're listening, you got an open invite to We Might Be Drunk. <laughs> we'll get whatever booze you want. Look, I fucking, we, our bartender didn't make it tonight. She's Puerto Rican. We know what Chris does to Puerto Rican women, so we yeah, told I, her to stay home. Honestly, that's better but, for me and my family that she didn't show up. Yeah, she's, she's a good-looking lady. No, but we, Is uh, she? Yeah, yeah, but we, oh, but boy. we, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, <laughs> but hot, we, hot Latina women, yeah. I'll make you, I'll make you a cocktail. Anytime. Can I get one more? Actually, of course, yeah, but, dude, we need more ice, Matt. We need more ice. I, honestly, dude, this is one. Somebody's got to drive my car to the Gramercy. I'll drive. Okay. I can drink and drive like you wouldn't believe. Don't say that. Mark. I really can. I'm a great drunk driver. Don't say I that. I grew man. up drinking and driving. <laughs> I'm from Louise. I'm <laughs> you from New Orleans. Digging a hole here. No, I'm uh, just, right. I've never had a DUI. Dude, I've never gotten I pulled realize, over. I was. I, this might be boring, but I was watching today the this this story of the frontiersman, and like I didn't know the history of the American frontier. Like I didn't realize like the historic significance of New Orleans. Like oh, yeah. whoever controlled New Orleans in like the War of 1812, like there would be no country if there wasn't New Orleans. Like the French had to give up New Orleans. So so I didn't know if you know this, Napoleon. You know, who, the France, France own like the whole Louisiana territory yes. that, you know, the Louisiana Purchase, whatever. Yes. So Napoleon in like a drunken stupor just gave, just fucking sold Louisiana to Thomas Jefferson for like what would be the equivalent of like a few hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. And just like, like when Steinbrenner the bought the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, <laughs> what are you doing? I know, and it but was I was a big like, deal. it's fucking interesting. Like, I didn't re did not realize. Like, I was like, oh, you know, fucking whatever. New Orleans, I don't know. You drink hurricanes, you go on, you know, have Mardi Gras, whatever. But it's like, without that city, dude, there be there would be no United States. Well, you think United States? Well, there would we wouldn't be, we'd be half a country. We would stop at. You know, we'd stop in the Midwest. Maybe right. we'd be better Let's off. Let's go back to the 13 colonies. What do you guys <laughs> think of we that? Might be, well, we might be there. happier. I think we're already there. Yeah, I mean, right? the country's completely divided. Thank so you, it's not uh, it's not that different. Oh, nice, dude. I like that. Just a dirty, sweaty oh, hand. Oh, man. So I washed my hands before this. You can't. I'm sorry. Was that disgusting that no, I just did no, that? No, no. I love fun. it. <laughs>
I haven't washed my hands since 1989. <laughs> <laughs> I really haven't. You can't make me laugh when I'm making I'm, a fucking I'm drink. Just telling the truth, <laughs> dude. I know 1989. Good year. Oh, that's that's enough. We got enough of that. I'm, I'm like feel, legitimately I'm still, I'm, fucking I'm green here. Fuck. I'm drinking the Toxic Avenger over here. You don't like it? Well, oh, cookies. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Whose birthday is it? You guys want some cookies? Yes. yes. Put yes. it in. Hey, let's, let's, Thank you. Let's chew. That's great for audio. Uh, well, you can Happy move the birthday. Bike. Happy birthday, Chris. This is for the Beacon. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. There I'll do you a go. Cookie. What the you hell? know you want one. <laughs> yeah. I saw the photo of you with your family in the gruner. I said, that first thought was, that is really sweet. Second thought is, that's got to be hell. Yeah, I know. I was well, like, oh, well, the truth. Well, that's, that's the thing. Dude, I, I have the same thing with my family where, like, I'm so grateful they come to shows. It means uh, the world to me that my parents, but, like, Holy shit! Like they've come when I done, did Fallon. They come when I do Colbert. They come, and it's like it's so meaningful. But at the same time, you're like, man, it's very stressful. Yeah, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I've told my family already. Like I, I want to do. I'm going to put a special on YouTube, kind of, you know, like you guys did, and I'm just going to do it at New York Comedy Club because I'm like, I just want to get it out. I want to get the material out. But I, I told my family, like, you can't come. Yeah, I don't want you to come. It's a small and it, it's room. no. I don't mean to be disrespectful. Like I, it just adds a level of pressure that I that is not necessary. Agreed. So I'm not I'm not gonna do it. Thank you, Sam. I so, think that's the move. So I'm not gonna do it. This is a fucking great cookie. A little stale, but great. I'm yeah. drunk. So I like, I'm okay with a stale cookie. I don't mind. Yeah, especially with the booze cooking. Ooh, I like these right here. So whatever the hell these are called, I'm what a is big that? fan. I don't know. They're thin, so you don't feel like they're as bad for you, but they're delightful. Wait, I like a crunchy cookie. Get a cookie. <laughs> right. Last one. Hey, I'll tell you. Damn, here, split it with me. Split it with me. All right, all right. You want to split half of this? Nah, I hate those. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it too. It's too gay. It's like the pride flag. Right What'd that? you eat today, Mark? Anything good? No, no, I eat a lot. No, I, I try to. I, I ate oatmeal and uh, that was it. And I came here. Mark doesn't eat much. What do you eat? I oh, we had ate, a sandwich. We had a push sandwich. I had an egg sandwich and then I had a uh, a turkey sandwich. I'm I'm a boring eater. How do you guys stay so thin? Do you just eat right? You're thin too. You no, no, I'm not. I'm two forty. What? Really? Boy, yeah. well, you hide it well. Where I do you know, put that's it? That's what I'm saying. It's all, it's all about the angles. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I drop martini. I just, I'm, I, uh, what? I, no, I normally eat more exciting than that. On the road, I, I try to eat, go to good restaurants because I want to, I want to at least like feel the city. You, you, won't, you won't eat like Domino's or anything. Nah. No, no. Well, I will never eat Domino's because we live in New York fucking city where I can eat great oh. pizza on any corner. Why would I eat Domino's when we can get a better slice than any corner, man? Oh, it's true. But I'm saying if you're in a bullshit city. No, I don't. I won't eat pizza on the road unless they've got a good road pizza spot. Like if I'm in New Haven, Connecticut, I'll eat pizza. You don't, you don't ever like hate yourself after a set and just get Pizza Hut or something. I've, I've done, done that. I've done it, but it's like I usually will like Panda you know, Express. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah. I nice. I, Stop the Asian hate. Exactly. <laughs> here, here. Is that real? Let's talk about it. Asian hate. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine I go into it. Let's talk about the Rock. He's a transphobe. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. I guess I don't really. I don't know. Mm. No, because you guys I'll, have always been thin uh, since I've known. I've known you my whole. I've known you since two thousand. I've known both of you guys since like twelve years now. Well, you guys, old, we're like significant parts of each other's lives. Oh, yeah. you yeah, realize that? So long. Yeah, it's wild. I've like, known you for so know, long. Chris. To know somebody for 12, 13 years, you know, like and to like someone for that whole how time. insane I know how like how insane that is. Yeah, I like, know. You may not see each other all the time, but it's like. The fact that like we very well could be in each other's lives for like thirty years. That's why I invited everybody to the wedding because I'm like I've seen all these motherfuckers grow, kids, no kids, marriage. Who's somebody? Who's somebody? If you just fucking say it, we're drunk. Who's somebody that just missed the cut? Uh, <laughs> just, uh, come on, Mark. All right, Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> he could take my place. <laughs> no, because I put know, him at my table. I'll just watch, yeah. I'll watch my drinks. That's the first time I'll ever be in New Orleans is for your wedding. What? You never been? Never been there, man. Dude, get there Great early and do the tour. No, 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 no. Like that's history. Me, me and my girl plan on getting there three, four days. What's before. the date again, Mark? All right. Do we bleep that? I heard I, that, I heard that's a good time to do it because it, it's not so oppressively hot. It's the best month of New have Orleans. Have you tried these olives, by the way? Oh, yeah. What do they have? Blue cheese in them or something? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's great. Do they really? We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment for me? Working out or buying some new sneakers is an investment in myself. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. We're in therapy. We go to the same guy. It's necessary. Clean out the garbage. Your head has all these horrible thoughts. Splice in your childhood, traumatic experiences. You're a wreck. You're a mess. 
You need therapy. Get out the garbage. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut, or even trying therapy, you're your greatest asset. So invest time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. Tell them how. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Maybe you got a weird boil on your face or something. Mm. You're weird, you know, you don't want to see that. You're all set. Yep. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. We Might Be Drunk is sponsored by BetterHelp, and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash drunk. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash drunk. You got to do this. It's, it's therapy. Very important. Take care of yourself. It's going to change your life. Here, here. We Might Be Drunk is thrilled to welcome our new sponsor, Fanimal. I love live events. I hate buying tickets. The hidden fees suck. And coordinating with your friends is a nightmare. They're garbage. I always end up fronting a bunch of money and chasing down my friends to get reimbursed. Not me personally, because I'm very generous. Oh, yeah. But if they flake, I'm stuck with the whole bill. And then I discovered Fanable. Fanable has tickets to everything. There's no fees. The price you see is the price you pay. That's, I mean, that's pretty big, honestly. Yeah. Not only are those prices transparent, but they're almost always lower than anywhere else I look. And for any hot ticket like Coachella, a Laker game, or Dave Chappelle, Fanimal is always the cheapest option. Nobody gives, nobody goes to live events anymore. So why buy tickets alone? Fanimal, although if you do come to a show alone, there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. I love that. Oh, uh, someone yeah. tweeted me about that the other day. They're like, I want to, is it weird? My friends bail. Is it weird if I come alone? I said, no, dude, enjoy yourself. Yeah. And you know what? The guy made new friends at the show. There he tweeted you go. me after. He's like, I sat with these guys and they were tweeting me too. So you end up having a great time no yes. matter what. Um, Fanimal's patenting group purchase makes it easy. First, you set a minimum size for your group, and you choose the number of tickets you want to pay for yourself. Then you invite friends. When the minimum size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, nobody gets charged. You don't commit until your friends do. March, tell them how to... Mark, I called you March. <laughs> March, March Norman, tell them yes. how to do it. Oh, yeah, and Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take my word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com and sign up with code DRUNK for 20% of credit, $20 of credit towards your first purchase. We drink on this show. <laughs> Check out Fanimal and experience more. Support the show and get $20 off your first purchase with the code DRUNK at Fanimal.com, F-A-N-I-M-A-L.com. Get on it! Hey, folks, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh, yeah. Set your first New Year's resolution with good intentions and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code DRUNK for 20% off plus free shipping. Holy hell. I love Manscaped. I use the ball wash. I shave with the uh, the lawnmower. It's good stuff. It gets it in tight. I keep it in my travel bag. I just, whatever I need it, it's all there. You got the crop preserver, crop reviver. Uh, you got the uh, lawnmower 4.0. It's got a light on it, for Christ's sakes. I love this thing. <laughs> you love it. They even, uh, they, sh they have a travel bag. I still use boxer briefs are great. And uh, the ultra premium body wash is great for Manscaped. Love Manscaped. I used to use their shampoo and conditioner, if I'm being honest. Do you? Oh, yeah. I used it today. That's where this fucking load of bird's nest came from. <laughs> but, yeah. Get it, get on it, folks. Yeah, I got some of that shampoo in my, in my uh, shower, too. Hey, whether your resolution is to work out more or to travel to new places, be sure to travel to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer of 20% off plus free shipping with the code DRUNK. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. One last time. One last time. Sorry, I've been drinking. 20% <laughs> off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code DRUNK. It's the new year. No pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. Support the show and get 20% off and free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. Hell yeah. Get on it, man. And look better and smell better. I only fuck with blue cheese or jalapeno olives, dude. I like it, what dude. What about a regular olive? 
I'll do an olive. All right. I don't know why I said it so defined. My cousin used to put olive. olives on her fingers, on her fingertips, and dip them all in mayonnaise. And, and she used to eat them. And one time she puked so hard, they started coming out of her nose. Wow. And I, Your cousin, I, Honey Boo Boo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my cousin. <laughs> dude. Uh, my, my um, I, uh, yeah, dude, I'm excited to go. I'm excited to go to, um, to New Orleans because... Uh, you know, love and history, and I love. Um, I, I've just never really been to like the deep, deep south. Like I've been in Nashville and nah, Florida, but like nothing. New Orleans is like the south. You do the road. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, but there's no road in New Orleans, right? Like, what? No. Where can we play in Louisiana? They there's have a high, they have Harris, I guess. There's, there's Harris, but there's a couple little theaters. Harris the there. Casino. Yeah. You've done it? No, I haven't done it. But no they, one but does it. Big comics go there. I guess. What's well, a big at? What is it? Two thousand seater or something? No, not even. It's like a little improv in the Harris. Really? Yeah, but no one does it. It's like I saw Dat Fan there once in nineteen. 19- I opened for Dat Fan at Tulane 99. when I was at Tulane. Oh, there you That's go. Cra- yeah, I forgot. You went to t- a lot of people went to Tulane, right? You, Jeselnik Sean went Patton, there. Je- oh, Jeselnik. Because when I first started, it was I. It's interesting when I first started. I had this complex or this insecurity because. You guys are such like comedy historians. You know everybody's albums and all that stuff. And I remember feeling like insecure where I was like, I don't know much about the history of comedy. I've never been to New Orleans. All you guys were like doing like the same. Those are the two? Those are such. No, because because everybody was from New Orleans. You went to Tulane. You, Sean Patton. uh, That's three uh, people. No, no, no. um, um, Theo. Chesley, Theo, all those. Jeselnik went to Tulane. Everybody was from New Orleans. And I was like, I'm a piece of shit. I thought you needed a passport to go over the Brooklyn Bridge. How do you think I felt? I come to New York. All you motherfuckers are New Yorkers. I was out of fish out of water. It's like, dude, I remember when you were a janitor. (laughs) Remember when Mark was a janitor? (laughs) You used to do it, Professor Tom's on Second Act. I did that show, and then we used to, and then we did you, the show you used to run with Harrison. I did that show. What for was a that while. show? Um, what was the name of that venue? Sage. Sage. Yeah, and Harrison was I like all these shows. Sage. I, Sage was a great fucking. show. And he show. had another one on Second Avenue. What was that uh, venue? Bar eighty two. Bar eighty two. Bar eighty two. Yeah. That's that's what I used to do. The open mic in there, and then stay for your guys' show with Harrison. Harrison Greenbaum. Yeah, it was hard to follow. That was that a great fucking show. Day. Hell yeah, and that that's not even a venue anymore, right? Bar eighty two. No, com- no, completely. Like I, like I actually haven't brothel. walked by it in fucking ever. That was a good bar too. Hell great yeah, bar. dude. I had a lot of fun at Bar eighty two. I used to be a physical therapist, so I would do physical therapy. I remember, we, like did, th- we did some road gigs together back in the day. Yeah, the three of us did one. Remember? Which what? one? What? We did Mohegan Sun that one time. We did all three of us. Yeah. Oh, with Amy. Is no, that it was. We, up Amy? That, we were there with Amy. It was. It was. Way long ago, Scott like we were Rob a triple was headliner. Oh, writer. Scott Rob when he was doing the story on him, and we drove home that night. I don't don't remember you remember that. Scott Rob? I remember doing Scott Rob. Yeah, but I don't remember this it was gig. us three and Scott Rob in the car. I remember what? that. Yeah, and I think you were headlining because they were uh, Esquire magazine. We were right. co-headlining, and you were opening. It was how long opening. ago it was. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's not ringing a bell. Well, I got Mohegan? to the beacon first, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys will get to Radio City first. <laughs> Dude, how about this? Uh, Hassan Minaj texted me the other day. Shout out Hassan Minaj. Uh, he's another guy I started comedy with. Hassan Minaj and dude, the very first television show I ever got to be a part of was Philosophy, and uh, it was on MTV. Hassan was the host, and fucking Kevin Barnett was uh, was my was the panelist. Me and Kevin were the panelists. R.I.P. R.I.P. Kevin, I miss guy. Kevin so much. The great, great Kevin Barnett. I love Kevin Barnett. Kevin would have been comic. huge. But Hassan, he would have been huge if it Hassan this is what a beast fucking Hassan Minaj is. He texts me last night. He goes, hey, man, are you around to do a set February 25th to 27th? I'm doing some shows in New York. I said, uh, I can't do 25 or 26. I'm on the road, but 27, just let me know the venue. And he writes back, Radio City. I was like, wow. you're doing f- a weekend at Radio City? He goes, yeah, I got five shows there. I was like, dude, you're throwing that around like a fucking, like like it's an improv. Yeah. He was just doing five at Radio City, just right. banging them out. I was like. What is that, 20,000? No, 5,000. F- no, 6,000 seats in Radio City, so 30,000 seats. I there once. I, I Did you for, bomb in Radio City? I opened for the uh, MTV Music Awards. Wait, so he's doing City? How many shows are you doing? Five. And so that's what I'm saying. It's 20,000. He's huge. I thought he'd do no, more no, than no, that. Uh, no, uh, no. Hassan, like, Hassan is... I think Hassan I'm saying, do the garden. If you're yeah, doing, he's huge. If you're doing five and a great shows guy. in a 6,000 seater, that's 30,000. 30,000. Oh, that's, that's crazy. bigger than the garden, Who which is 20,000. He's huge. Like I'm not shocked at all that he's doing that. Crazy. He's big. That's my goal. I would... I, that is my goal. If I could just get to do one, I don't have to sell it out. One show at Madison Square Garden, where I'm the headliner. That would be my goal. You'll get there. Well, yeah, you'll get there. Oh, I mean, the on. garden now feels like uh, like a funny bone in Albany. I mean, it's like Sebastian's doing thirteen of them. Louis did ten. Burr did a couple. It's just Schumer did one or two or three or four. Did you open for her there? Yeah, I had to follow Madonna. Fun oh, fact. Yeah. 
She looked great, by the way. Yeah, would you? Did she have the fake ass yet? Yes, she nice. did. Best sex. She's of a my fake life. ass. Oh yeah, pull up Madonna's ass. I mean, it's wild. Just pull it right. You no, know, it's your home. It's like really Don't big act or like something. You have to Google it. This yeah. guy's acting like well, he has to Google it. She's 68 years old and she's got the ass of uh, Chloe Kardashian. She's got the ass of my kids' mom, uh, my kids' uh, grandmother. Look at that thing. Nice that's Puerto bananas. Rican ass. I'm good. I don't like those. Me yeah, that's either. a little ridiculous. Awful. Hey, that was anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah, can't eat after this guy. <laughs> oh, Look at that ass. Wow. No, she didn't have that ass when I saw her, I got to say. That's a nice butt. But, a decent but I, um, I, I think that, um, you know, because what I heard about Madison Square Garden is you don't really have to sell all those tickets because scalpers buy them immediately. Mm. Right away, scalpers buy the tickets. Book it, dude. That's Let's what I heard. Do dude, it. Book the garden. Yeah. Should us, should the three of us do the garden like we did fun with, and get Scott Robb back? <laughs> the band? <laughs> Shout out to Scott Robb, man. Great writer. Is he still with us? Yeah, yeah. He looked I, like a guy who was who could die any second. He lost COVID a lot of weight. Out. Did COVID kill him? No, I'm kidding. Oh, he lost a lot of weight. He looks great. Oh, Look he did? Scott Robb. Yeah. Shout out Scott Robb. Yeah, Scott great, hey. great Did that writer. piece ever come out on you? Uh, I don't think so. He was no? thinking about I tried doing to a kiss book. him on the lips. He, <laughs> he touched his heart rate. I like no, that. He, he, no, he... Uh, he wrote a great book. He's written a few great books. He's I remember really... Scott Robb on, on that drive home was just a really cool, nice guy. Sweet kid. Yeah. Good, good egg. Yeah, I like Scott Robb. He used to buy me diner meals, and he was like, I don't know how you run around like this, because he was a big guy. And I'd be like, ah, yeah. And he would get cabs everywhere because he didn't want to run. So well, it was dude, great for me. That's the thing, too, is like, you know, like just now, just recently, I think it's the same for all three of us, is we just the tickets are starting to come and the podcasting and all Finally. that we found. But it's like, you know, like people don't know, like, you know, from 2009 to like literally a year ago, it was slaving like hell, like like I mean, doing sh I remember, dude, I, I used to go up and op I went up. I was a physical therapist and I drove all the way to Delaware just to do five minutes in front of Mike Vecchione. He graciously gave me 20 bucks and then I drove all the way home and went right to my day job. Like yeah, that, that's like sometimes I'll get messages from up and coming comics or whatever and be like, hey, like I have a day job and like it's just so hard. How did you do it? And I'm like. Man, if oh, you're already messaging me that, dude. like you're never gonna make it. Like, yeah. I just, I just was like, there's no excuses. I just want to make it so bad that I'm yeah. like, I'll just. Do I, I drove all the way up to the Boston Comedy Festival. You always a hustler, man. Thursday night, I'll never yeah. forget. Thir Thursday night, 2012, drove all the way up to the Boston Comedy Festival. Uh, the first round to try to do five minutes just to get to the second round, which would be the next week, just, you know, to win a bullshit prize, whatever, just do anything. I got immediately eliminated from the first round, like immediately. Just do you remember who beat you? I drove Adam Newman. Ah, uh, that's yeah. hilarious. I just gave him chiropractic advice. And uh, Adam Newman? Yeah, Where is Adam Newman? Uh, I miss Adam Easy Newman. Jews. Does he live in New York? <laughs> that's like He's in L.A. Well, I miss he, uh, Adam Newman. He's Adam. a nice guy. He was yeah. another guy. He was part of our whole Carolines. circle. He was always at Carolines. Well, he's an Carolines. LA guy now. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he tweeted something how he needed a chiropractor in L.A., and I was like, I Good can't. man. Yeah, yeah what are you going you. to physical therapy for, by uh, the way? My uh -oh. I had two herniated discs in my neck. In your neck? Yeah. Shit, how'd that happen? Eating pussy. Uh, yeah, I just ate a lot of pussy, and it just it took a toll. I mean, I was, hey, just, it I was they said you were you're the best ever, and I was like, look, if this is the toll it takes, and I'm I'm down. So yeah. uh, that's like one. I swear to God, one guy he came in when I was I was a physical therapist. He came in and he had a herniated disc. Out, I think it was C five or C six. That's what I got. That's mine. So C. So this is funny. So C five, C six. He comes in and he's like, he's like, um, you know, he has this big herniated disc, whatever. And my boss, this wasn't me. My boss. Who goes, um, he's like, you know, doing that. He's like, how do you think this happened? He goes, oh, he goes, um, he goes, uh, I think it was, you know, lifting up my kid or maybe it was swinging mm. a baseball bat. And then my boss says to him, he goes, he goes, you sure it wasn't, uh, going down on a woman? Really? And the guy, and the guy goes, uh, the guy goes, yeah, I think it was going down on a woman. Haha. <laughs> you know, like whatever he goes, it was going down on a woman. He goes, well, historically, statistically, if you, if you herniate C5 or C6, it's because you're sucking cock. Like, just joking around. Like, just full of, like, just a joke, yeah. whatever. Ha. Huh? And the guy goes, yeah, I am gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, like, and he was like, okay, no problem. Like, you know, like, whatever. And I was like, it. and like, the guy, like, who said, I, yeah, I am gay, I was like, it, it was a moment where, like, it was laughed off, but, like, I had the angle in, like, he truly, like, came out of the closet to us and was, like, begging for help. I was like, that guy's fully gay. Yeah. And just was like, yeah. And like, I was like, I was like, yikes. We were just, I mean, hey, whatever you want to do. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Dude, but when we'll I lay off your alternative lifestyle for a few weeks because we're trying to help you here. <laughs> Dude, so. And that was Kevin Spacey. One, one, I know. One crazy physical therapy, well, two crazy physical therapy stories I have. One, um, 
this was 2011, maybe. Yeah. Guy comes in, back pain, okay? Just back pain, just generalized back pain. So, you know, you learn all the tests to reproduce. You know, being a physical therapist is a lot of times people haven't come in with MRIs or x-rays yet. So you have to try to reproduce their pain and then it kind of you work backwards to figure out how did this injury happen and then that can dictate how i treat you right so this guy came in with this generalized back pain i'm doing all the tests that i've learned and because there's even tests to know if somebody's faking it for like a workman's ah. comp there's even tests that we learn how to do that to be like aha like you're lying and then you know we can you know we, we won't let you you know get away with that yeah and and um and all these tests are are like not working, like everything. I'm like, it's not workman's comp. It's not this, not that. What the hell's going on with this guy? So I had, I was a, you know, I was a licensed physical therapist, but I was new. So I call in my boss, who's you know, 30 year professional, and I say, hey, like uh, Jim, I, I don't know, like what's going on with this guy. Like it's embarrassing, but like, can you come in and help? And he was like, absolutely. Like you know, whatever. You're a new student, like you new therapist, like yeah, I'll come in. So we go in. He's doing. He did every test I did. He's like can't figure it out so he says to him he goes what's going on here sir he's like you know could you just be honest with us like what's going on he goes i don't know man I, I hurt my back and he goes um okay he's like but is there something else like that's going on like uh -oh. any information w would help us we want to help you get out of pain because he was in excruciating pain you believe me or you wanted some pills uh, well I, I, at first I, that's where i was going i was yeah. like maybe this guy wants pills so in the physical therapy office that I was working at at that time, there was also uh, a medical, an orthopedist that had an MRI machine and an x-ray machine. So, you know, everybody was pretty close. So he says, you know what? Let's go get you an MRI. This way I can at least see the tissue and whatever. So, you know, we, we don't go into the MRI. That's, you know, another professional's job. The MRI or x-ray tech comes out and gets the doctor, the orthopedist immediately and comes over and he's like, bum, 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 and we're like, something's like maybe it's a tumor I, I don't know like something was serious so then my boss and this orthopedist are friendly so they go over and they start laughing they're looking at the picture they're laughing and i was like what the fuck so I, they the guy my boss jim he goes chris come here come here this is like my second week on the job he goes look at this look at this it's a gerbil no i didn't know what it was no <laughs> no it wasn't that huh. it was a matchbox car Wow. He was taking his kids' matchbox. This is a true story. He was taking his kids' matchbox cars and shoving them up his, shoving them up his ass with condoms that would like, he was trying to like, um, like massage his prostate. Like it was the only way he could come. And he had gotten one of the matchbox cars lodged in his back and it was pushing on his uh, lower, like lumbar spine. Ooh. So he go, we go in, we go in wow. and he goes, um, we go into the guy and, and we, and you know, my boss says, Listen, we got the MRI results and, uh, you know, you have a matchbox car or what looks like a matchbox car, some type of item far and off. We don't know the brand per se, in your but body. you're right. fucking weird. And the guy, and he, and the guy goes, and the, hard to I find swear to God, in New York. <laughs> the guy goes, the guy looks at, he goes, now how'd that get there? I'll never forget. He goes, now how'd that get there? That's great. And I was like, and I was like, okay. And then, and then the guy says, listen, it's no problem. Like my boss is, you know, you got to be professional. He goes, there's no right, problem at right. all. And goes, um, but you know, you're gonna have to get that surgically removed. Oh, on top of my that, ass hurts. Listen, no, to but I on know. top of that, on top of that, my boss then, you know, says, you know, listen, can you just disrobe so it may maybe I can get it out? You know what? But when he disrobes, he sees he has a full like, like rat, like it almost his his dick and balls look like purple. Oh my huh. god! So we're like, what's happening now? So, so, you know, cause now like multiple the cars, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes, <laughs> so he goes, um, he goes, uh, is that bad? And my boss says, that looks like a sexually transmitted disease. Mm. And he goes, and he goes, oh, but I'm only with, I've only ever been with my wife. He's like, well, you know, you might want to talk to your wife. Oh, the guy boy. goes, yeah, I, I got to talk to my wife. And then like, we're doing the exam. And then like five minutes goes by, he goes, I've had been having sex with prostitutes. You think that could be it? And then my boss is like, yeah, I'd say that's it. <laughs> yeah. He goes how can we keep this a secret and then my boss says you know there's you know it's it, it's it's client you know uh client privilege like i'm not gonna we won't say anything he goes yeah but i need medicine i need medicine to get rid of this disease that i have i think it wound up turning out he had like gonorrhea or and chlamydia like he was fucked yeah so he says he was at that time one of and this is way before the presidency one of donald trump's lawyers Whoa. So he says to me, because I was two, three weeks onto the job, he says, hey, you're a young guy. 
I was single at the time. He You're goes, representing Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, would yeah. you mind kind of putting this STD medication in your name, uh, and then I'll come pick it up from shit. your house. I'll pay a thousand dollars a week for Oof. it. Hey. And so I, so though. I was like. Now it was just me because my boss had left to oh, go, wow. you know, get a hot pack or whatever. So he he kind of what and I didn't know what to do. I was 24 at the time. A thousand dollars a week sounds pretty good. Pretty good. But I, I didn't know what to do. So in that moment, I kind of made a decision. I said, I said, hold on, like, let me think about it. And I went out and it's the only time in my life I ratted. I ratted and I told I told I know my father's like, you fucking rat. Yeah, I, I told my boss. I said, this is what happened. And he goes, he goes into him. He goes, get the fuck out of my office. Like, right, like they were friends, these people. He goes, get the fuck out of my office. He goes, you're going to, you're going to do this to a young, he goes, this guy, this wow. kid just got his license. You're going to, you're going to ruin his entire life because you want to fuck prostitutes. He goes, get the fuck out of my office. I never want to see you again. Get the fuck out. And the guy wouldn't leave. And then the, my, my uh, boss goes, you want me to call your wife right now and tell her what's going on? I have her number too. And then the guy was like, you know, pull up his pants, whatever. And he goes, he goes, you know. You could have like just ruined your whole career if you would have done that. He goes, you know, that's malpractice. That's, you know, code of ethics. You could have done everything, you know, ruined your whole life. And I said, I know, like, thank God. I was like, you know, and he was like, you know, you want to you want to do this for 20 years. Like you would have ruined your whole life. I was like, absolutely. About 10 days later, MTV called me and were like, hey, we'll offer you. We will offer you an overall deal if you quit physical therapy tomorrow. I went and I said, I fucking quit. I was like, I'm not. And doing you called the guy's wife. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing. <laughs> yeah, and I fucked the guy's wife. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you want to get gonorrhea? I'll give you gonorrhea. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah, and then and then and then a woman came in. She had lower back pain. Uh -oh. uh, I'm sorry. She had uh, tennis elbow, uh -oh. lateral epicondylitis, which they call tennis elbow, right? So she's got tennis elbow. Treating her for two hot, like forty year old divorcee, hot. So she goes, um. She goes, uh, she, you know, coming in for the tennis elbow, treating her all is good. And then finally she comes, she comes in one day and she goes, she goes, the pain is like radiating to my lower back. I was like, that's mm. not possible from tennis elbow, but you know, she goes, but it's in my lower back. I was like, well, you got to go get like a script. You got to get a prescription from an orthopedist and, and they have to refer you. And then we could treat your lower back pain. She's like, can you just be like, can you just like massage my lower back, please? Like, it's just like temporary. I was like, okay. So I start massaging her lower back. And she goes, can you do a little lower? I'm already on like the top of her, oh like her, they're called like your sits bones. I'm more, like, which is like those like dimples that you see over like a person's like. Love the butt. back dimples. Back dimples. So I'm right there. I'm massaging my thumbs or whatever. She goes, go a little lower. I was like, I was like, ma'am, that's like your butt. She's like, that's where the pain is. Oh so boy. I was like, okay. So then she goes, I'm massaging it a little bit there. She goes, lower. I was like, I was like, come on. Like, I was like, are you serious? She goes, you're 24, 25 years old. She was like, you don't want to massage a hot 40 year old's lower back. Wow. And I was like, I do. She was like, well, then do it. And then I would start like going lower. I was like, you sure this is okay? She was like, I want you to do this. And I was like, oh my God. She goes, does that door lock? I was like, I think it does. Jesus. Was, I swear to God, dude, wife? I had a fucking boner through my khakis like you can't imagine. And she goes, um, she goes, just go lower. So I kept going lower and lower and lower. And then I got to like the top of her pussy, which was like soaked. And she goes, stick your fingers in it. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I swear to God. <laughs> is this a penthouse forum? I don't dude, believe this. I finger. I like put like my finger. Like I was like, this is crazy. So I put my <laughs> fingers in her. And she goes and she, and she like grabbed my cock, which like I said was rock hard. I, I remember I had Dockers khakis on and they were like ripping at the seams. Stain proof. Thank God. Yes. And she goes, just <laughs> unzip it. So I unzipped it and my fucking boner just like popped out like bing like yeah. that and she sucked it four times i blew a four load right four times in her mouth. yeah like, just like <laughs> oh, oh four, four strokes. strokes dude you know how hot that is four yeah, strokes and i just blew a load in her mouth wow she was like oh you're such a baby i was like don't say that and then she and then but i had <laughs> better zip it after than before <laughs> i know I, I wound up having sex with her like three or four times uh, after in that. the room no no no, no oh. like in later in life but i was like that was one of the craziest fucking stories hot, hot older woman hot older woman and I, I, for the life of me and this is a good thing i cannot remember her i remember her first name not her last name wow yeah ladies see how easy it is it must be nice to be a gal that's female privilege well then i told my boss about that again 30 years of experience he goes ah your first one i said ah! i said my first one he goes that that happens every six months in a, in in an office like this i was like really he goes yeah wow. he goes he goes they you know a lot of times like these women like you know you're, you're you're helping them you're giving them something their husband or or if they're single that they don't get and you're good at you know 
you know, you're helping them ease their pain. I was like, yeah, wow. but is I was like, but isn't that wrong? He was like, yeah, it is. Yeah. But he was like, fuck it. That's yeah, healthcare. Oh, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's isn't sticking up, a fucking Matchbox car up your ass the wrong shore? Yeah, but I was we're like, here to help people, we're damn human it. Human beings, god damn it. I Good was for like, your gay's anatomy. Oh yeah, dude. Gay. Gay's anatomy. <laughs> gay's anatomy is what I should name my special. That's a that's a that's a gay porn right there. Man, what a story. That's hot. I'm it turned was, on. It was hot shit, man. Man, damn. a lab you put a lab coat on, a woman will do anything. Four sucks. That's the name of your next special, dude. Yeah. Four that's sucks. like one time I was like maybe 22 23 walking down like sixth avenue ish like you know like that part of the west village kind of by the comedy cellar where it's like i don't know where the even what like all the streets fucking yeah, intersect yeah. and i'm like i don't even yeah. know it was like around west fourth park it's not a grid anymore yeah it's, i don't know what the hell was going on madness it was like made before cars so i'm walking out i'm walking down the street and my boy was with me i'm walking down the street and it's like you know 10 o'clock at night summer night and, uh, you know, way before comedy, I was just in the city hanging out and um, a woman comes out like, uh, you know, what didn't look homeless, didn't look crazy, nothing. She comes out of an apartment. She goes, I just need to suck somebody's dick. I Come have to on. suck. Some I swear to God. What is she, this? She was this like, feels I, like an MTV show. I swear to God. She goes, no, well, that's what I thought. <laughs> suck I, it or not. What she do goes, you I just have to suck somebody's dick. I thought I was on Punked. The Punked was popular at that time with Ashton Kutcher. She goes, I just need to suck somebody's dick. I was like. I was just I was just there. Me and my boy were just there. And she goes, You boys want to get your dick sucked? And <laughs> and and I was like, we both were like, what? She goes, she takes on, a mask off as John Travolta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, yes. And then she literally got on her knees at 10 30 at night on whatever street that was and sucked both of our dicks. Come on. For like we, no, neither one of us came, but it was like two minutes and then she walked away. There's eight guys booking a flight to New York right now. Oh, I know. It, 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 you're gonna save week. this economy. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. What? Yeah, that that those are like that those are like moments in my life from like I, was that real? Did that right. really just fucking happen? My virginity was like that. A lady was on the on the balcony flashing on Bourbon Street. We looked at her, we said hi, she said come up, and that was how I lost my That's virginity. That's fucking nuts. Every now and then. But see, for a guy, this is like a godsend. For a woman, this is a a you know, victim moment. It's yeah. fascinating how different it is. Well, now I've gone to an age I'm 37 now and maybe I've had enough sex or enough sexual experiences in my life where now it's like I know this sounds like gay and weird, but like I really like if I was single, like I really would like rather be with a woman because of her personality than her looks. I feel I'm getting old too. I'm 38 and I feel the similar. comments are exploding right now. Yeah, like positive. I get the fake tits, I get the fake ass. Sure. I know what a blowjob feels like. I know what it's like to have sex with a hot woman from every. I get it. It's yeah. like, can I have a conversation with you? Like, do you exactly. want to talk about history? Hey, man. I, I like history and shit. Like, do you want well, to do that? It's fascinating how I mean, you have to be somewhat attractive. Well, sure. We're normal people. Like, men and women trade places with age. Like, when we're in our, you know, teens and 20s, it's like, I'll fuck anything. I'll fuck a blow-up doll. I'll fuck a dumpster, whatever it is. And then women are all like, ah, I need a personality. And then women start getting horny at 30, whatever. And then men get a little more like, I need a person. I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. They flip. It's fascinating. What I'm trying to say is we get older, we become better. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they turn into men. They get horny. They do. They just want to get casual sex. They're divorced. They're fucking ready to well, go. Well, you know, I, I'm with you, Chris. I mean, the older I get, it's like, yeah, it's th that shit, the peace and the just chilling Well, you out. have a good relationship with your girl because yeah. it's more of the personality. I mean, she's beautiful, but it's more of the personality-based sure, stuff. Yeah. It's like so much in common. It's like, it's like I get Like, the thing is, it's like, I get it. I, I know what it's like to have sex with beautiful. I get it. It's like, if there's no connection, it's like, I, I And it also know. lasts 12 seconds. Yeah, you know, I get me. it, dude. I, I'd rather jerk off. I'd rather fuck a guy that I'm really into. Am I Same. gay? Dude. What are you doing later? Maybe. You want to hang out? Well, we're doing, I'm doing Ari's show. Oh, I'm going to fucking bomb. Do you have any I mean, stories prepared? I'm nothing. doing I'm doing a very short story that I've been doing in my act. See, his is well, punched well, is out. There, is, there, is there a, uh, hey, is that fair? Is he allowed to do that? I thought, well, yeah, I thought the story's a story. All right. Wait, wait, is that fair? You mean right, being prepared? I'll, is that I'll, fair? I'll allow it. <laughs> Uh, what, right. How, how the fuck minutes. is gonna be shit talking me because I fucking worked on my story? I'm not shit. I'm jealous. I'm like I'm my. I'm I gonna heckle you. Yet. Fuck. We're we're worried about ours. We're gonna bomb up there. It's a. Why well, am bomb? We gotta too. get Norman to if Berkowitz. If I bomb with a prepared bit, that's even more embarrassing. <laughs> At least you guys aren't. We gotta get Norman to Berkowitz. But let me just say, you went back. Uh, y y your Adderall hasn't kicked in because we're all over the road. I know. Here, sorry about that. We gotta talk about the fact that we talk about the early stages. How horrible that was. How hard it was driving to Delaware for five. Five bucks, five minutes, whatever it is. I don't know if I could do it again. Could no. you do it again? The fact that we were in our twenties, you're drunk the whole time, you're you're ambitious, you're I, looking for adventure. It made it okay, but 
Knowing how hard it was, I don't know if well, I can do now, it again. Now I don't know if it's worse or better. I mean, it's better because of social media. B- because right. you can kind of blow up if you have a decent act on social media. But there's no shortcuts in stand-up. You there's got no that shortcuts, right, you know? but dude, I'll say this. We might have been drawing earlier if we started now only because of social media. Like I, I agree know, with you. But our act might be stunted because you're just so focused on so you. I'm happy we, it took 12 years for same, us to start same. to sell tickets because now I know at the very least I'll give them a good show. You know? Yeah, no, I'm you know? With, I think you're probably right. I just think uh, I think it works both ways where, you know. Well, how many people do you see putting out albums like, two years in and you're like, no. what are you doing? An al- you're just showing people how not good you are. I, you're just I, putting that out there. I think I think what happened, what happens with, with must have happened with all of us to, you know, to get through whatever 10, 12 years of this is I never stopped for a sec. I never thought about how hard it was going to be to make it i never thought about that same, same. i just said i'm gonna and i never tried to do any tricks i never tried to do like oh maybe i'll get big because i'll you know i know the algorithm i never thought about that i said right. i want to get if i'm going to get big and popular i want it to be on the backbone of my jokes i want it to be on my bits yeah that's what i want i don't want it to be on because i went viral because i you know somebody hit me in the face with a watermelon right. I, I don't want that <laughs> right, right. you know, you know so- how we close our shows <laughs> <laughs> dude fucking nail me with a watermelon dude tonight. i i hear I'll you come. well you did it the right way i mean everyone respects you because of that but i mean it, it is definitely uh it's a slower rise, but I, I would hope we we stay a little longer because of this. That it took. A, I I think you know there's some people that I don't know what just fell what on just you. Fell on me? What the hell? An egg. An egg. Oh, oh. Is, is my girl pregnant again? <laughs> <laughs> That's how strong Chris's sperm count is. <laughs> a shot a load on it. Nine no, months. But, but I think when like you know what I remember the green years the and years, it must have been like eight <laughs> years ago. Louis said something. It was, maybe it was less than eight. Maybe it was like five or six. But like Louis said, you don't want to do this. You want to do this. And yeah. I would think you want to hile. Yeah, man. I mean, shout out. I also think I didn't put I didn't put like a album out. I mean, none of us put it, our shit out for a while. I still yeah. don't have an album out. What? Yeah. I'm, putting, out it, special, I'm putting it out. Special? Well, I got a special, but no album. I'm putting my first album out Comedy ever. Comedy Central next didn't year. release that wow. as an album too. Why not? No. I don't know. It's just, Smart man. They fuck I, you. Yeah, they fuck. I, I did my half hour special. I did my hour special, and that's all I have. And they never gave you any audio on that. No, no. I'm gonna do it for the first time next month and put it out in a month. Good. But, but, but. But I should, okay. we should all re-record our shit because Spotify is just raping us. Yeah, Spotify pulled two of my albums. Did they pull your albums? Yeah, yeah. Spotify just—it's funny. They don't they it's funny. They're I, allowed I, to do I, that. I believe I that this Rogan and thing. Neil Young shit is a distraction from the fact that they don't pay their artists. They don't. They don't pay comics. They you, pay. They you know pay. Why? I found out why. why. Because when you are a musician, you got to pay the the writer, the performer, and whoever. That's a comic is all those things. So they'd have to pay us all those. Those uh, and they yeah, but maybe there's and like a new deal to be to. had where it's like a th- I don't know because we should be getting paid for that. It's like it's like some like we write all our own material like a you know somebody who writes a script they get paid on that. Like yeah, I'm course. writing a script but it's on I I'm performing. Well, it. That's why we're all doing nine podcasts. Exactly. <laughs> we're getting cookies. We're getting drunk at noon. Dude, I'm fucking feeling great right Isn't now. Isn't that dude? Good. I'll tell you I, that. It's a pretty good martini. No, right? honestly, dude, that I feel like I'm a decent bartender here. No, you are, because and I'm sorry I judged you immediately because I was like, there's no way that's going to taste good, and now it's like. It's Dude, going down is easy. that a gin or vodka? I can't vodka. tell. You asked for vodka, didn't you? I did, yeah. Hey, we man, we're not. That bottle. We Dude. would never disrespect a guest. Dude, yeah, Sam, we're, we're happy you're here. Sam and we're Mark happy do to not have disrespect. You. No, good to have you. Wait, hold on. I want. Oh, I did a Gotham. I did. I had like one Conan under my belt and maybe like a half hour or something, Comedy Central. And Gotham called and they said, will you do a panel and talk to young up and coming comics? I was like, look, I'm nobody, but I'll do it. Every guy there was like, I work a day job. I have two dogs. There's no way I can do open mics. What do I do? Or how do I get an agent out of the gate? And you're well, like, the dogs are worse than the job because the, the dogs are like, are you going to get rid of the dogs? Right. And I was like, you're all, you're screwed. You're fucked. You're fucked. And I was like, do you want to do comedy? Yeah, I think I like comedy. Ah, uh, you're out. You're already out. If you're putting this shit in front of comedy, then it's not going to work. You got to love it. Yeah. You gotta love it. You, you gotta, gotta want to do it. it. Well, that's the thing. Is like it's it's not just comedy. It's like anything you want to do in life. Like yes. any any audience member that's listening, whatever your goal is in life, just understand the money comes second. You have to put the passion first, and the money will always come second. Right. I remember vividly, I had mono. I had mono. Mononucleosis. I was maybe 12 years old. I had mono, and my mother had gout. So we were both wow. bedridden. Wow. And yeah, I remember. I missed like. Two weeks of school, and I was watching Oprah because my mother watches Oprah all the time. And I was watching Oprah in the early '90s or mid '90s, <laughs> and I, you know, I was mo- I had mono, dude. I was fucked up. And I remember Oprah did was doing some, you know, one of her talk shows, 
And she said that. She goes, she goes, and remember, she goes, remember that the money always comes second. The passion comes first. The money comes second. If you remember that, you'll always be successful in life. And I remember being a little kid for, you know, whatever, fate. Like, those words just got, like, burned in my head. Yeah. And that's very true. Like, now I can sit here and it's like, you know, I'm doing okay. Like, my family has what they want. I, I have, like, stuff beyond my wildest dreams. And it's like, because the money came second. Exactly. I I, 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 I was paying. I was losing money for the yes. first seven years. But I didn't give a fuck because I wanted to do it. But you love doing that. I love man. doing it. That's you love stand-up. I enjoy watching you on stage a lot because you are very free. And you're yes. like, you, you don't give a shit in the best possible way. Like, you give a shit, yeah. but you don't give a shit. And that those are my favorite comics to watch where it's kind of like. Uh, Unpredictable unpredictable but also like chris has levels to him or like yeah he yeah. can go on drunk and be hilarious he can go on and be tight and be hilarious like you have levels to you. you're just a funny person no you're i a funny appreciate per- it. and the key to you is you're vulnerable as hell like uh, very especially vulnerable. guys like us we very rely on the act we're jokey you just open up up there you let it all out well, and that works well because what they happened for me is is was when i had you know my my i have two kids now i have a, a six-year-old and a seven seven month old but when i had my six-year-old I realized like shit, like not a negative way, not like, you know, I don't care, whatever, passive aggressive. But I kind of like in a spiritual way was like, I don't really care what anybody else thinks of me other than my children. If my Ah. children look at me and are happy with me and I'm doing a good job as their dad, that's all that matters. So I'll go on stage. Listen, I'm not a guy. None of us are guys. I don't think you can be hateful and funny. There's no way Hitler was funny. You know what I mean? So right. it's like so it's like when people get quote unquote canceled or be comedian, a real bummer if he was. Oh, imagine uh, he fucking ripped. Uh, like, oh. like like dude, like Hitler, terrible person, but like he he's pretty witty. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know you're like going into the Holocaust. You're like, it was a good joke though. Like, he <laughs> fucking killed it. He's giving a speech, but thank you just for the weather. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was just yeah, but but so I so I realized like, you know, like I, I'm not a hateful person, man. Like no. sometimes my jokes like, you know, like I'll talk about race or this or that. I'm like, I'm just being it's always coming from a place of what I want to be funny. Yeah. So I kind of got over the fact of like some people might get offended at that. Like whatever, man. Like, you know, I do jokes about uh, I did a joke about a, a kid, one of my nephews who had a peanut allergy and all these people who are parents of children with peanut allergies were attacking me being like you're a piece of shit like i hope your kids die and all that and i'm like whatever man like i i don't i don't want anyone with a a peanut allergy to be affected negatively i'm just making fun of my truth yeah Yeah. they're they're really doing no they're really they're really react and that's the problem with the internet is you react without thinking yeah but i mean what you're doing is you're trying to put something positive into the world your intent is pure yeah and these are people who are like i hope your kids die yeah. Take a step back you before you irony? write that. Take yeah. a step back before you write that in print. Exactly. Yeah. You psycho. Put you. They just. They just go off emotion. They just go off reaction and just type. It's bad. News. That's ba- pure. That's pure hatred. That's yeah. the irony. Yes. They're mad at you for. They think you're being hateful. Yeah. They are. Act, it's vitriol. The, yes. The, the best thing I ever did for my um, psyche, I guess, and it, it does. I don't do this all the time, you know, because sure. it's such an addicting thing. Social media, it's just like cancer, like a cigarette. Like I really do think science will look at the internet and social media, like you know, in fifty years, like we look at like cigarettes. You know how science looked at cigarettes now. Like yeah. you know, there used to be ads for cigarettes when we were children. There were ads promoting cigarettes. Like I think social media has got like that, you know, corrosive property to it, but. The f- best thing I, because there's no way around social media. We have to do it, right? And it works. So we have to do it to sell tickets. What I do though now is I post the thing I need to post for the day, and I do not look at the comments. I do not worry if it's bombing. I do not worry if really? it's not getting uh, uh, enough interaction. I don't do it. I say I made the decision to post this. I stand by it, whether it crushes or doesn't, and I do not look at it again. I don't care what you said. So hard to do that ghost. because it's so hard to do that though. Because as comics, our job is to edit based on the response. So that's right. very that's difficult. True. I mean, like our acts are like. Oh, I don't care what you think. Well, then you're a bad comic. But with social media, I get what you're saying. It, it is a different thing. You kind of yeah. do have to stand behind stuff. It's going out bit. to the world, not a comedy audience. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, it is different. But I get both of your points. You're both right. Well, it's no, tough. I agree with him. I'm just saying it's interesting because it is with what we do. It is a different. Yeah, well, because yeah, my, yeah. cool my whole thought is like, my whole thought has been like, you know, having kids. I'm like, 
what am I going to do? Sit here and obsess over comments or not? It's right. like, I, 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 I got to feed my kid, man. Kid is I, number I got to push my kid in a swing. Like, I, I, I can't. I don't care what you have to say. Because yeah. also the truth is, is I believe, and this is, again, not just comedy, you know, it, it, to comment positively or negatively on anything is a psychotic kind of person. Like, agreed. Ninety five percent of people don't discourage don't positive comments. Though. Well, positive is good. We love you guys in the YouTube. Thank comments. you. <laughs> well, YouTube's different. I mean, like on Instagram, it's like I, you know, I comment on you guys, like people I know, like this is amazing, whatever. But it's like if I don't know your complete stranger, to comment any, anything on me is like crazy. Where it's like even the people who message you and like, hey you know, you've helped me through a tough time and blah, blah, blah. It's I appreciate all, that. It's all, no, no, I appreciate it. It's yeah, all yeah. beautiful. I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. But you have to understand, like, even that is a level of a mental ill. Like, you don't want to interact with that. You don't mm. want to do that at all because, I, listen, the 1975 are a, a band that I love. They've helped me through breakups. They've helped me through er I love that Great band. Great band. I've never once, and I have, the, you know, Alex Edelman is a guy, or a friend, friend of the show, I'm sure Alex Edelman, opens for them, knows them personally. Is that right? Yes. I didn't know I've that. never once even messaged them, asked for anything, because it's like, it's psychotic. I don't know them. Right. If they somehow, if I found out somehow, oh, they heard this bit or that, but okay, fine. But it's like, they're just helping me. I don't need you to know that. Like, right. But so it's like, it's this thing where I realize about the but internet. But if they reached out to you, wouldn't you feel good? Oh, 100% I would, but they wouldn't. Because they maybe their assistant they might, would, they might. but that's the whole thing. But maybe they would. What if what if they're like, hey, they're, I like your stuff. I think it's just a, a polite people too. Hey, uh, I loved your thing on that. Is that okay? Yeah, that that would be cool. But they're also like an established band. I am talking. You're an established comic. You did the beacon. Not really. You know Kevin Fuck Spacey. Fuck you, dude. You fucked I'm, Travolta. Dude, you know how many stories this guy told? This is the self hatred. This is the guy who does Letterman and those then goes right to the Village Lantern. I know. And oh. I, you know what else I left out story? I ate, I ate ninety nine cents pizza. <laughs> I used to eat those all the time. That was, that was good pizza, by the way. I used to eat those all the time. You think New York's coming back? By the way, I don't know yeah. if you talked about this before, but don't doesn't it feel alive again now? It you does think? and it does. It feels I mean, almost pre twenty. It feels almost twenty nineteen. Almost. Know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I wish. No. I wanted to be there. This is a guy who's not taking the train. He's he's driving in. That's the problem. The what, are the trains empty? No, no they're, they're just crazy. Shady. They're shady right now. Right. It's like the eighties on the train. <laughs> yeah. But 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 that but but. That means, though, that it's going to come back. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I hope yeah. so. We're not going to live like this forever. Worst case, we get some good art out of this. Hey, man, think about all the good movies we got out of the New York being a shithole. Taxi Driver. Hell yeah. Well, dude. Dog Day Afternoon. I yeah. hope you're right, but Hollywood sucks. It's going to have to be some independent motherfucker on an iPhone. I, just, I watched Power of the Dog because of it's you. It's good. It's great. Good. Yeah. Great movie. Dude, it's, it's 7.50. What? Holy this show shit. started 20 minutes ago, the show we're supposed to be on. Oh, oh really? Yeah, let me look, oh, check if we're Ari all popping into Ari Shafir's uh, secret storytelling Holy show, shit. and we might be fucking him. So we should probably wrap this episode up. God when does this episode come out? Uh, I'm not sure. Plug some Downstairs, dates, Chris. Okay, go to Chris D. Go to ChrisDComedy.com. Um, I have a theater tour. Um, I have Cleveland, Detroit, Indianapolis, Denver, yeah. um, all these places. So just go go check it out. Uh, Portland, Seattle. Um, it's really f Las Vegas. Um, so go nice. go to chrisdcomedy.com. Um, if there's curtains up in some of the venues, it's because I'm sponsored from Blinds to Go. It's not because I'm not selling tickets. Ah, you're doing we fine. Love you. We love Thank you. you. I love you. All right, we'll jump in an Uber and get the hell over to that. No, show. I got my car. I'm gonna drive oh. drunk. Yeah, I'll drive. If you want me to? All right, I don't fine. Mind. Do it. We got uh, yeah. I got Sacramento, San Diego. I don't know this coming out. Orlando, West Palm, Columbus, uh, Salt Lake. Uh, all that bo the beacon or hopefully will sell out soon and then we We're got gonna, uh, fucking uh, Toronto uh, yeah, bah, 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 bah. Uh, <laughs> something Adam Sandler there I don't know what else <laughs> 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 um, a bunch of other shits coming uh, Brea uh, Houston Dania Beach a lot of shit. Oh, I'm doing that, Dania. You did that, Chris. You did the floor. I like Dania. Is it good? I had a good time in Dania, man. It's uh, Fort Lauderdale is awesome. Oh, a nice. lot of shit's coming. I like, it's samuel.com slash shows, but I'm adding by the day. Yeah, same here. MarkNormanComedy.com, all kinds of Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, uh, La Jolla, you know, Raleigh coming up, Vegas, not Vegas, uh, shit, Chicago. I've been drinking. 
So, uh, Mark Norman comedy out to lunch. Check out the Netflix. I hate myself. Um, Hey babe, Chicago too. I'm at, I'm at Chicago. I'm gonna shoot a special there. So get, to, get oh, are you really? Ooh, what venue? Exclusive. The Den. The Hell Den. Yeah. That's the yeah. cool spot. You're shooting another special on YouTube. Yeah. You Dude, see? You're a fucking monster. He puts it out. He's a machine. I mean, hey man. All we'll right. See. We'll see. You heard it here first, folks. Thanks. Keep peep drinking. Patreon. Get on it. We got new merch. Check it out. Go gay. I love you. Praise Allah. We'll see you in hell. Trump Thank 2024. You. Sunday's the day for my next. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close I've had a little too much bourbon And Norman's talking shit about the fucking Pope And I get down in the same way Up on the roof like a cop's coming And naked Samuel is feeling dangerous I'm out to lunch here in New Orleans This woman doesn't look like I remember